Good, Good morning. morning. Uh, welcome to a wonderful, sunny, warm, glorious spring Tuesday, Tuesday morning. morning. What a lovely day. Yeah. I hope uh, it's lovely Sorry anyway. if it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> We're recording on Sunday, so we're not We're quite sure. I hope it's sunny. <laughs> <laughs> um, our reading today comes from Hebrews. Um, and I'm going to just give you a quick summary of what Hebrews is all about before I give you our reading. And so Hebrews um, was written is a letter writ- written to... Um, the Jewish Christians mm-hmm. in Jerusalem, we think. We, we, Google didn't give us much of where they were. We think Jerusalem. We think Jerusalem. But... Um, <laughs> we're not sure who wrote the letter. So some people think it's Paul, um, but actually we don't know who wrote the letter. So it's an anonymous letter uh, to the Hebrew Christians um, in about AD 60. Um, and so at the time, the um, Christians were very heavily persecuted. So AD 60 to 64, um, Nero was the emperor mm-hmm. and we know all about Nero because he it's Roman candles isn't yeah it? he burnt the Christians which mm-hmm. is not very nice um and so that's what they were facing so actually they were having a really terrible time um, and so this particular group of people that this um letter is written to um were falling back into their Jewish ways because it was easier to be a Jew at that time because the Romans accepted that faith mm. because it was there before they were um, and they just they they kind of got on with it, didn't they? Um, than to be a Christian, so they were these this group of people were kind of reverting back into their Jewish ways, um, and they weren't meeting together either um, as Christians. They weren't studying or worshiping or whatever together. So these Jewish people were falling back into old ways mm-hmm. and and old not habits. not pursuing the Christian faith as paul would would have wanted them to mm. whether paul wrote and it or writer. not and the writer <laughs> yeah and, and so our reading is hebrews 5 verses 11 to 14 we have much to say about this but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand in fact though by this time you ought to be teachers you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of god's word all over again you need milk not solid food Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Mm. Um, What I didn't mention about the letter is um, the writer is writing a very passionate and emotional, almost sermon, encouraging them back into the Christian faith Mm -hmm. um, and following and telling them this is who Jesus is. This is what he's done. This is actually this is really important and Mm. inspiring. So... Yeah, there you go. And this little passage is brilliant. I really like it. And um, I hope that God is already speaking to you about things mm-hmm. that are in it. But I'm going to unpack it in two little ways. But before <clears throat> that, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Uh, I don't know if it's real or not, but I read it in my various uh, perusings and researching for this. And I think it really helps to unpack what's going on here, actually. Uh, so there was a headmaster of a school uh, and a new position opened up for one of the existing teachers to get a promotion. They wanted to become a head of department, so getting a few extra responsibilities, a bit extra money, and all the rest of mm-hmm. that. And so the teacher found this, uh, the headmaster found an excellent teacher who'd be brilliant at it, who had 10 years of experience doing this. And so he thought, brilliant, I'll go to you. 10 years experienced teacher was like, yeah, that sounds brilliant, a new job, <laughs> promotion, new responsibilities, uh, and more pay. <laughs> and so this teacher did brilliantly at their job. Uh, and their promotion was really successful and did really well. But there was another teacher at the school, one who had 25 years experience, and they came up to the headmaster and said, but why did you promote this teacher here who had 10 years experience? I've had 25 years experience. Mm -hmm. And the headmaster turns around and says, that may be true, but in fact you've had uh, one year experience 25 times. And that's kind of what this passage is about, I Mm. think. It's the Hebrew Christians going, I believe in Jesus. Yeah, I believe in Jesus. <laughs> I believe in Jesus, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's them just starting to grasp the basics without pursuing any further. As Gemma said, rather than pursuing into the Christian faith and all the new things that have come about um, through what Jesus did, they're slipping back into old ways and holding on to that while just maintaining the little slither of Christian stuff that they can, the milk that mm. um, there's right of references in this passage. And so the two things that I'm going to quickly mention um, are talking about home groups and about mentoring. And have a listen to what I say and then just reflect and reread this passage and see what God might be talking to you uh, about in this passage. Uh, so home groups are brilliant. Mm-hmm. I know Jan went on it all, all of the time, but I'm going to go on about it now. They're brilliant. <laughs> and home groups are really good 
for doing exactly this sort of thing, for encouraging us to move away from milk onto solid foods. And it's not always the easiest thing. It can be quite uncomfortable. Our men's group has particularly <laughs> passionate discussions about things. Um, but actually, it's all with the purpose of helping each other grow, yeah. of building each other up and getting us off milk and onto a big meaty steak. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'd encourage you just to think about maybe joining a home group if you're not or continuing to invest in your home group as you move from milk to solid food. Uh, and the second one, as I said, is mentoring. Uh, and David Perriman did a preach a long, long time ago now. I mm -hmm. uh, can't exactly remember when, but it was brilliant, I'm sure, about mentoring anyway. <laughs> Uh, and there's the common phrase or rule or fact that you become the average of the closest six people in your life or something like that. But the six people that are closest to you, you spend you, time with, you, spend time with yeah. Yeah, you gain some of their attributes and you become like them. Hmm. So I doubt that many of you would want to spend all your time with six year olds yeah. or 10 year olds or maybe even teenagers, 15, <laughs> 16, 17 year olds. Uh, but you want to spend time with people who encourage you, who build you up, who push you on. Mm -hmm. And this is no different from uh, what this writer is talking about here. So you might want to find some sort of spiritual advisor, mentor. Uh, you might want to be their disciple, as like Jesus would have called it in the times. Um, just to learn from and push you and encourage you so that you, again, move from milk onto solid food. Mm. Not so that teenagers can't challenge you. Oh, teenagers can definitely Absolutely. challenge you, but <laughs> don't hang around just teenagers, maybe. No, no don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it has its effects. It does. It does. <laughs> um, there you go. Yes. Have a reread of this passage. See what God might be talking to you about it, what he might be highlighting to you, and what you might need to do about that. Um, as it is a very challenging passage, even mm. though very simple in nature. Yeah. Have a lovely day. Yeah, enjoy the sunshine. Have a good, nice, big steak for dinner. Cool. Uh, yeah. Bye. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>